Life is full of challenges. Obstacles that force us to overcome what we thought unassailable. That redefine our limits and push us past what we thought we were capable of. This is a story of two such challenges and how they came together to help and support each other. Challenge number one, the race across America. RAM, as it's called, is a 3,000 mile, non-stop endurance bicycle race across the U.S. It starts in Oceanside, California, and ends in Annapolis, Maryland. In between are mountains, deserts, long endless plains, and all sorts of weather. And unlike the Tour de France, there are no stages or stopping. The first one to Annapolis wins. Challenge number two, pulmonary hypertension. pH is hypertension of the lungs. But unlike the more common and treatable hypertension of the heart, pH is a far more insidious condition. It interrupts the oxygen exchange in the lungs, leading to chronic shortness of breath, dizziness, and fatigue. The increased strain frequently results in damage to the heart. And although there are treatments to help manage it, there is currently no known cure. And often the only remedy is a lung transplant. It's a life-altering disease that affects far too many people and is unknown to almost everyone else. Hi, I'm Anne Marie. I'm Stacy. I'm Ryan. And I'm Patty. And together, we are Team Phenomenal Hope. And this is where the two challenges came together. Team Phenomenal Hope. Four women and a dedicated support crew who came together to take on the race across America and pulmonary hypertension in what they called the race of a lifetime. Our goals for the Race Across America, our mission all along has been to dedicate our racing and training to people who live with pulmonary hypertension, um, to raise awareness about the disease, and to raise funds to find a cure. How about this? We won't do a bronchoscopy today. There's the good news. That'd be great. <laughs> Team captain, so Dr. Patty George, night, is in a perfect um, position to understand the impact of pH and the importance of finding a cure. As a pulmonologist and researcher at UPMC, she sees the impact of the disease on a daily basis. I think one of the best parts about this whole journey, this whole experience is it's been a chance for us as a team to use something that we love doing, which is riding our bicycles. It's something we all love to do, but we get to do it uh, for a great cause. Um, and in doing something so simple, hopefully it will help raise awareness, raise funds to find a cure for pulmonary hypertension. Patty was joined by three other riders. Stacy Truskowski, an administrative assistant at UPMC, is a tough all-round rider whose will and tenacity never lets up. Anne-Marie Alderson, a biomedical engineer and an Ironman triathlete specializing in ultra-endurance events. And Ryan Palermo, a spectroscopist and passionate mountain biker whose athleticism is as indomitable as her enthusiasm. And with the riders and crew in place, Team Phenomenal Hope was launched. 3,000 miles. 12 states. Four riders. Training began nearly 18 months before the race was to begin. Well, we've done a lot of combination of, you know, inter high intensity interval training and just long steady state distance riding. I commuted at least three days a week all winter and uh, there was just one week this winter that I did not ride my bike to work. Just one week, one day. Where we might ride for up to eight or nine hours in a single day on the weekends and during the week the workouts were usually a little bit shorter but they were condensed and we had a lot of high intensity interval work so we could get more bang for the buck that way. But in addition to that, the team organized or participated in other pH awareness events throughout the year, like the Phenomenal Hope 5K Run Walk, organized by Pittsburgh's PHA support group, raising money as well as awareness. But as the excitement continued to build, so too did the preparation and training. If there's a problem, just give us a wave and we'll pull over. Okay. With months of solo training behind them, it was time to start practicing as a team 
and as a unit as well. Can you hear when he talks? I could hear Pete through the mic. Perfect, yeah. Sorry, I'm late. It's now June 6, a little more than a week before RAM is to begin, and everyone needs to load the Team RV with everything needed to support four racers for 3,000 miles. Everything from bikes, to clothing, to food, to medical supplies. All right, one more! The months of training and preparation are starting to come together. And with Oceanside feeling closer than ever, the excitement is starting to swell. Oceanside, California, and the team and crew have finally all assembled. Sure, can you grab this? It's the day before the race begins, and officials make sure everything is up to RAM specifications. <laughs> but there's still some time for relaxing. And then, can you guys all even an interview with ABC's Nightline? Later, there's a meeting of all the teams to go over important rules, procedures, and guidelines, and to introduce all the participants. Number 425, the United States, Team Phenomenal But the day isn't over yet. A dinner has been arranged by the local chapter of the Pulmonary Hypertension Association to honor the team and crew. We hope to be proud um, and uh, look forward to, to, to accomplishing this task in Thank you. The next morning, Everyone is up early and ready to go. But first, Crew Chief Kate Bennett goes over some last minute points. So I just wanted to go over briefly our race Bible just because I think it has some important information for you guys. And with yeah. that, it's off to the races. The staging area is a wash of color and activity. And Team Phenomenal Hope arrives and begins their preparations. No way, Ryan. Oh, Ryan. But first, a little impromptu warm-up for Ryan. time has finally come, and as the team makes their way to the starting area, members of the PH community are there to cheer them on. And you came all the way from Seattle for this? Yeah. Why? Because I wanted to show support. I think this is amazing what they're doing, and I think it's so cool that they're bringing, you know, awareness to our cause, and I think that's awesome. From the United States, we have four lovely ladies riding for the Pulmonary Hypertension Association Team Phenomenal Ho! The team rides out as a unit but they quickly transition to the format they will be following for the next 3,000 miles. Stacy! The team and crew will ride in two shifts. You got this, girl! The riders alternate pulls, one riding, while the other waits ahead at a transition point. The second rider then takes over, her van and crew in tow, while the first rider gets back in her van and travels on to the next transition point. It hopscotches like that until they reach the race crew transition point, or RCT. There, the RV waits 
as the next shift prepares to take over. Once on board, the finishing shift can eat, sleep, and relax. I'm good. The first day runs east, through the mountains and deserts of Southern California. The winds are stiff, and the team encounters its first major descent, the glass elevator. A twisting, treacherous drop of 3,000 feet in nine miles. The team settles into their first all-night shift in Eastern California, and the race continues day and night. But there are some things to look forward to. I love the night shift. Night shift is my favorite shift. It's easier for the riders, it's cooler, it's a hell of a lot less traffic on the roads, and we're permitted to be immediately behind them. The next morning finds Stacy and Ryan pulling shifts through the deserts of Arizona. It's not a mirage. Thank you. Welcome to the time station at Congress, Arizona. And what began as a simple idea for cyclist refreshment has over the years grown into a full-blown oh wayside God. getaway for racers and crew members. Oh, really? <laughs> and the opportunity is not lost on Ryan. But I had to stop. Yeah. 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 Can you hold I got it. Take your electronics off. Take electronics. your electronics, electronics off. All right. Oh, oh that is beautiful. Oh, oh, thank you. <laughs> and with that, oh, it's back God, to work. That movie is the best thing that happened to me today. Stacy soon begins the long ascent off the desert floor, up the Yarnell grade. The ride continues through the mountains of northern Arizona, through the night, and eventually to sunrise and the unforgettable Monument Valley. Rolling, rolling, rolling. The ride continues through the eerie, nearly lunar landscape of Utah. Next stop, Colorado and the Rocky Mountains. As the sun begins to set, Patty and Anne Marie begin their ascent of Wolf Creek Pass. 8,400 feet, baby. The highest elevation of the race. The sky grows darker and the 30 mile per hour crosswinds make the pass even more challenging. Finally, the harrowing descent is done and the team presses on through the Colorado mountains and on to Kansas and the beginning of the Midwest. And although it might be flat, 
It is hot. How you like in Kansas? Everything I hoped it wouldn't be, just like they told me. It's really hot, but we have a little bit of help with the wind, so I can't complain too much. The trek across Kansas is a grueling two-day affair, with the heat and building humidity taking their toll. Fortunately, up ahead at the next RCT point, some of the local kids have found the team and given them rock star status, nice. including a much appreciated treat, not for the faint of heart. <laughs> While others find relief in more unconventional ways. So what's all this about? What are you doing? It's essentially giving my quad a massage, trying to roll out some of the knots on a foam roller. It's really painful, but when you get up, your expectation is to feel a little better. <laughs> so. There she is. Woo! Kansas rolls into Missouri, which rolls into Illinois, and eventually Indiana. But as the countryside grows greener, the heat and humidity begin to take a toll. That'll cool your body temperature down. Fortunately, Ryan's parents have arranged for a little team trip. Very clean on the way out. Are we? Very clean. That's what I was told. Is that, con is that confirmed? Dairy Queen, here we come. Dairy Queen! <laughs> Glad to see the sun's going down. Definitely. I get this done. Later that evening, as preparations continue for the next shift change in Bloomington, Indiana, a surprise rolls up for the road-weary team. Members of the National Pulmonary Hypertension Association who have been attending the national convention down the road in Indianapolis have come all the way up to show their support and appreciation for the entire team and crew. Yeah, I can't hope. It's mind-blowing. Thank you so much for coming and visiting. The next day, in Athens, Ohio, the weather finally catches up to them. And while there is a brief let-up as they enter West Virginia, the heavens open up again, and this time the deluge is unrelenting. So much so that the riders are actually forced to wait things out a bit until visibility returns and the lightning stops. Conditions finally give away enough to resume the slog. And the race continues. Back at it. Moving forward, one pedal stroke at a time. By sunrise the next morning, they have reached western Maryland. It's now day seven, and the crew prepares for the final day. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> ready for finish day? Heck yeah, I think we're already finished day. Definitely. Warmed up. But Ram has saved the hardest stretch for last. It's the Appalachian Mountains. This range features climbs that are steeper and more sustained than even the Rockies. And with thick fog blanketing the heights, any excitement about finishing day quickly fades from view. Fortunately for the team, these mountains are practically their backyard, and they chew through the long climbs and rapid descents. And by mid-morning, it's over. But there are still nearly 200 miles left for Ryan and Stacy.
but at the final time station in RCT, everyone knows that the end now is at last in sight. <laughs> Superstar! Superstar! Yeah. The riders will continue on as a team, but in the meantime, family, friends, and supporters have all gathered at the finish line in Annapolis. Finally, the big moment arrives. It's an exciting and meaningful moment for everyone. It's a great achievement. 3,000 miles in 7 days, 7 hours, and 15 minutes. And as the team receives their medals, supporters from the PH, still in Indianapolis, watch on via Skype. It's a great moment for everyone, but perhaps uniquely for PH patients themselves, some of whom travel great distances themselves to be here for this moment. As a patient myself, I'm um, so excited uh, just by their, the care they have for our community. It's just given me a lot of hope as a patient, uh, so it's really exciting. It's been a long journey of miles, certainly. But the true magnitude of the ride has to be measured in the years of preparation, the dedication of everyone involved, and the hopes of thousands of PH patients for whom so much was riding. We just got to be a part of a whole different community and to be, I mean, I think we were accepted like family. And I think we motivated some people to do things to step out of their comfort zone when we stepped out of ours. It's been a tremendous experience. And you know, being a part of the PH community has been magical.